Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Community Issues. As usual, we are back with your favorite fortnightly program. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about Brexit versus NHS. What will happen if there is no deal? Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting any further time, let's go to our experts and find out. My first guest is Mr. Ahmed Hussein, who is a former Tory councillor, uh, a former TV presenter, <laughs> and also um, an NHS employee who is sitting on my left. A very good evening, Mr. Hussein. Thank you, Doris Bai. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for coming along. Uh, sitting next to Mr. Hussein is Dr. Jessica Potter, a very famous surname. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Potter, thank you very much for coming along. I know you're extremely busy. You're a researcher. Uh, you're um, a campaigner uh, with MEDACT, is it? Yes, MEDACT. that's right, yeah. Um, thank you for uh, making the time to come to my program. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate having you on board. Sitting on my left is Mr. Richard Flower. He's involved with a political party. Yeah. <laughs> he could be a GLA candidate but we won't reveal his political <laughs> lines at this moment. <laughs> He's an activist, um, uh, and um, thank you very much for coming along. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, thank you. And sitting next to uh, Richard Flower is uh, someone who's famous and has been in my program previously, <laughs> is Chris Worrell, uh, who works with a housing developer uh, providing extra care. Uh, and is obviously very much involved in this campaign as well. So Chris, thank you very much for making the time to come along to my program. Really Thanks appreciate Andrew it. Back. Thank you. Right, my first question goes to Dr. Uh, Jessica Potter, uh, and that is, um, what is the current state of the NHS given the circumstances that we're in? The NHS is in crisis. Um, we are seeing patients wait longer and longer to see their GP to get the treatments they need and we have a, um, beyond that an, a huge staffing crisis with um, I think over a hundred thousand staff vacancies which is only going to get worse with Brexit. So what will happen if there, if there is a no deal? If there's a no deal I worry about um, how we are able to retain the current staff we have, many of whom are from um, the EU. Um, we, I, I would worry about recruitment as well. What happens to people on visas? That we already know in the NHS that uh, there are many healthcare workers who struggle to get their visas um, signed off to be able to work here. Um, and um, the visa application processes are difficult and they're expensive and they tear families apart and that's just going to be extended from people who already live out or, or originally from outside the EU to people inside the EU. Sure. I will come back to you again, um, Dr. Potter, but let me um, go to um, Chris Flowers, uh, sorry, Richard Flowers. Um, You've heard what Dr. Potter had to say. Absolutely. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I think she's absolutely right, obviously. Um, the NHS has been strangled by a number of factors. Um, the slow increase in funds hasn't been matching the way that the costs in the NHS have escalated. That's because there were new treatments coming in, which are always expensive, new drugs are always expensive, uh, and because we've got an ageing population. Um, the other factor to consider is social care as well, because it's not just the NHS, um, which we all come to rely on more and more, but also it's caring for people in their own homes and how we can try and make the population better able to look after themselves in their homes rather than having to go into the hospital. But no deal Brexit is only going to make all of these things catastrophically worse. We're looking today at seeing a cut off in people being able to come back into the country as freedom of movement, Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, is saying she wants to end that on day one. Are we really talking about NHS nurses and doctors who've been on holiday or been to see family in Europe trying to come back to this country and just being told no at the border? What is the NHS going to do when that sort of catastrophe happens? And then there's the question of medicines. So many of our important medicines are imported. Insulin is obviously a big concern that a lot of people, we can't keep insulin, it, it doesn't last. So just so for the benefit of our viewers, 
insulin is a drug that's used by people with diabetes. That's right. Yes. Is that type 1 and 2? Yes, yeah. that's right. Both yeah. type yeah. 1 and 2. Okay. In fact, the former Prime Minister, Theresa May herself, is a type 1 diabetic and requires insulin. Um, it doesn't last. You can't keep it even in fridges, not for long. Uh, so we have to import it. But we're seeing today, we've got the uh, Freight and Trade Association saying that they're shocked by the news that broke over the weekend, the Operation Yellowhammer uh, announcements that the government is expecting there to be no diesel running out of fuel, even for internal transport, and that there'll be delays of weeks, possibly months at the border. And how are people going to survive? Thank you. I'll come back to you again. Uh, uh Mr. Flowers. Now let me go to um, Ahmed Hussein, uh, who is a NHS employee. What are your thoughts on all of this? Uh, there, is my, um, there is a fear about having no deal and, and having all this crisis around you. But if you look back in history, since the creation of NHS, there's always been a, a crowd cry. There's never enough. NHS is always in crisis, oh, it's going to break, it's going to be privatized, it's going to... Th There's always been that since the creation of it. And that still is on, and it will be. But this time around, the difference is, is that it might happen, it, it might be real. That's the only difference with bre no, no deal What Brexit. do you mean by it might be real? I mean, I, if we are going to have a no deal Brexit, yeah. the chances are that our relationship with the countries that we trade with at the moment will fall apart and we won't have a trade agreement in place. Exactly, so that's where I was coming in, that at, if you stop at the border, then starting from medicine coming in with trucks or by plane, whichever the source is, tariffs will go up, medicines will, will be expen uh, uh, you know, expensive, and moreover, the employees are, as Dr. Jessica said, that you know, we've got 100,000 employees short. short. These, these are so vacant positions. So nurses, doctors. doctors all sorts, we'll, all sorts we'll, we'll not be available. Kind of special. Right. Even in my team, we're not frontline, but we do end of life care. And even in our team, we have like four vacancies and we're running by agencies. So imagine having no deal and these people can't come in, then it will be even more worse then people like us will have to do double hours and whatnot, or, or, or it, it will have a crisis, a breaking point. But at the same time, the government has introduced uh, paying fees for people who want to adjust and stay uh, in the country. NHS is paying for their migrate, migration fees, uh, immigration fees for them and their families to, to stay. And I mean, I see on the internet advertised all the time, apply to, to get your residency for, for people there as help. But it's just not enough because if people are not going to come in, there's no point of you offering that service if people just not going to come in. And so you, you're saying that no matter what the incentive the government offers, yeah, it if, won't be of yeah, any benefit. If, if you're, yeah, if, if, you're, if you're given something and you're not, you don't need it, you're not willing to take it, there's no point of that incentive, isn't it? So the, the government is trying as, as it can. You, you know, a lot, uh, as soon as Boris came in, he, 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 he said he's putting in 1.8 billion. The previous uh, administration committed to some Well, it's still the same administ uh, administration, the, just some changes I'm, in position. What basically. I'm trying to say yeah. is that when it comes to NHS, all political parties are, have their heart and soul in it, and they try to make it good. But if the point is that with the no deal, if, if you can't get the employees in, if you can't get the drugs in, if you can't get the medicines in, then it's no point of trying to put that in. The crisis is real this time. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Let me go to uh, Chris Worrell. Uh, as a developer who's providing extra care. What are your thoughts into all of this? Well, the no-deal Brexit is certainly um, making it very difficult to make projections business-wise when it comes to social care, which I think over the last decade um, has been underfunded by the tune of about seven billion since yeah. the coalition government came in and yeah. enacted austerity. Yeah. Um, that's led to many you know, care providers going bust. And I think in Operation Yellowhammer, it was highlighted that the fact is the smaller operators may only last two or three months before they go bust, the larger five or six. Where's they going to leave all those people? Sorry, Chris, just for the benefit of our viewers, what is Operation Yellowhammer? Sorry. Um, somebody else have also mentioned that as well. Operation Yellowhammer is the documents that were leaked by Whitehall, the um, UK central government, right. outlining the implications of a no-deal Brexit. Okay. Um, and those, since they have come out, 
there's been a number of U-turns in the last 24 hours in terms of several several issues. But one of the main ones I think has been touched on by the panel is the you know Priti Patel coming out yesterday mentioning the minimum salary requirement of 36,000, while the average salary in Tower Hamlets is 29,000. I think London is 30,000. It's going to you know. You know, block a lot of people being able to let, uh, grease the wheels of those labour market with the EU citizens. And Including I think nurses and doctors. Nurses, doctors, doctors. Actually, like physiotherapists. Which is much less, about 26,000. And, and all the people who do social care. Exactly. But that said, there are exemptions. And despite these exemptions, I think for non EU citizens, nurses the, it was dropped to £20,000. But that isn't stopping the, as aforementioned, the, 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 the crisis in retaining staff and attracting staff because of burnout and stress. And I think only under the, the Labour government seems to be the only one that, or Labour Party seems to be the only one that are preparing to put the funding in there to meet those demands and needs. Well, the Liberal Democrats have promised £6 billion pounds by, paid for by a penny on income taxes as well. And in fact, the IFS, IFS said that our spending plans added up better. So, but I think we can agree that money needs to go in there yeah. and that we actually, need to be, we actually need to be honest. Well, you know, the Labour Party started the austerity cuts and they're the ones who slashed the building plans. So we can go back and back, but that's not really going to help. What we want to be doing is looking forward yeah. and saying, how do we work together to solve right. the problem? I mean, obviously, this is going to have a a major impact on the health of the nation, without a doubt, yeah? Absolutely. And, you know, it's it's something that's really worrying. Um, and Especially speci in the rural areas. Yes, yes. I mean, London is, is a bit attractive because people want to stay in the yes, city. Yes, yes, but, but in the, the rural, rural, rural areas, areas, can you imagine you getting see specialist doctors to... You can always... Or nurses already to work in the area, it would be... Yeah, it does you can already see yeah. people that are yeah. doctors that want to retire yeah. are in their 80s still working because there's shortage of that. Well, not anymore yeah. because of the recent pensions crisis, well, uh, which is a, a the major problem. The government the is proposing that people should now retire at the age of 75 or something, isn't it? Or? But uh, many people um, in the NHS um, at the moment are taking early retirement and not taking additional shifts because um, they the, just current, gov cope with it, yeah. no, the yeah. current government yeah. policies regarding pensions means that they're actually paying to work additional shifts. Mm. And wow. so so it's costing them so much mm. to um, uh, fill all of these rotor gaps, essentially, mm. and, and do much needed work, which has huge implications yeah. for patient safety. So there are so many different things this government are doing yeah. which are destroying the NHS. Sure. The pensions crisis creating a hostile environment where nobody would want to come and work here yeah. even mm -hmm. if and also there are certain tasks even jobs. if people wanted to work it there are certain jobs that they cannot take at the age of 75 this is impossible it, it is a false economy in, in one hand yeah. you you don't you can't fill in these vacancies but then you're paying three times through agency workers yes yes uh, and then you've got the pension yeah. uh, uh, crisis you yeah, know. yeah. It, it's all false economy I it mean is. in terms of the pay the government did say that to they were going to look at reducing from 36 to a lower version, but I think the 36 figure came by if you if you know that the um, uh, universal credit is on 20 21,000. So if it's 21,000, somebody needs to earn about 36,000. I think that's where it came from. That so people won't be on the door of the government on the DWP that oh I've, I need extra help, but in reality. We don't have those people coming in for those kind of jobs. Also, yeah. sure. in relation sure. to the NHS, I think the, re the important thing to point out is that the NHS isn't run just by doctors. In fact, we would be useless on our own. Yeah. Um, it's run by tons of other people. Yeah. Porters are absolutely admins. vital to yeah. my ro my job. Uh, people who work in the laboratory, people who sit on the front All line. All the ancillary services people. are very important. Uh, people LAS, who are London work in the frontline health yeah. delivery services. The thing to understand sure. is that this is a, 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 a very stupid idea to say that immigration is a problem for the NHS. The NHS's lifeblood is immigration and it's a win-win. <laughs> absolutely. It's a win-win <laughs> because we get highly trained, qualified people, hard-working people who want to come here, um, they get a higher standard of living, um, very often they get to send money home as well, so everybody benefits from immigration. It's why the Liberal Democrats think that immigration is a good policy. Um, here in the East End of London, obviously, we've got a great history of welcoming, welcoming immigrants. Um, especially Tower Hamlets, yes. Particularly Tower Hamlets. <laughs> it's always been the first port of call, going yes. back as far as the yes. French Huguenots yes. or the Chinese or... The docks. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And we're very proud of that, aren't we? We are. Yes, absolutely. Okay, look, let's let, let's be focused on this, um, and let me go back to perhaps uh, Dr. Jessica Potter again. Will Brexit make it worse, 
or will it make it better? It will make it worse, undoubtedly. All of the evidence points to the fact that it's going to make it worse, and no deal could be catastrophic. The, on you know, the day after we leave, they're saying that um, uh, that EU citizens will no longer um, have the right to live here. And what does that mean, both for their access to healthcare, which will become immediately restricted because of the NHS charging regulations, and their ability to work for the NHS? And that's not even going touching upon the broad broader issues about leaving the EU, which affect uh, people's health more generally, like um, pollution control, for example. Sure, um, Hussein, um, what do you think? Will it make it worse, or will it, make it, worse? it will certainly make it worse. I mean, in, in my line of work, we do um, placements and packages to keep people at home. So we we do for to keep people at home, and carers are vital to keep patients at home. I mean, people like Dr. Jessica would refer to us saying that this patient wants to go home and die. Yeah. But if we don't have the carers mm -hmm. to support that mm -hmm. and uh, the other facilities, if we need external district nurses and others to come in and help them in the community, mm -hmm. then we can't keep them. We have to keep them in the hospital, which then goes back to the waiting uh, time in the A&E mm -hmm. because the bed's not empty. So it's a vicious cycle and people is key to keep NHS alive and especially in the community and in the hospitals from carers, admin workers, porters, London's ambulance, you know, you name it. Not everybody's a doctor or, or a physio or, or an OT, but everybody else helps them to make somebody's life better. So I think on the note of immigration, I think it's just only one person and that's saying that immigration is bad. And but in theory, everybody else is on board with immigration, that they know NHS needs immigration. Um, but it's just one person who has drummed it up and, and put those posters out and whatnot. And that's why, that that's why it will be Nigel Farage to right. begin with. You know, he's, right. he's, he's fear-mongering right. fear on, on that issue. I mean, yeah, Theresa May did send she out those. She led on yeah, that, that, you know, the hostile Austin, environment yes. policies. I've totally seen all my lifetime, the, 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 life the, the Home Office I going further and I further totally to agree. the right. I totally agree. And the hostile yeah. environment under Theresa May. I, mean, I totally you know, agree. The coalition, one of its big failures, yeah. I would say, was but not restraining that. And we, we put a stop to the go-home vans when they were driving around. But well, actually, I think a legal challenge put a stop to the go-home vans. That's good for that. The campaign organisation. Chris, what do you think? Do you think... It's a matter of funding. Do you think they put a stop to it, or was it a legal challenge? It was definitely a legal challenge. Right, OK. You know, Brexit is going to be ultimately a funding issue. A no-deal Brexit is going to be catastrophic for the economy. That's not going to put developers off from developing when they don't know what the price of land or the cost of the construction or the values are going to be, let alone if they can't plan and project the business plan for those workers. But also, if, there's, if they're having to fund put, you know, a billion here for this and 400 million for that, yeah. how are they be able to fund uh, the NHS? Right, my next question is, and we need to be fairly quick because I'm conscious of the time and, and we need to go um, on break. So very quickly, Dr. Uh, Jessica Potter. What is the most worrying thing that's likely to happen with this Brexit deal or no deal? I think for me, the day afterwards, the immigration checks on uh, people making decisions about who deserves healthcare based on their immigration status. And we already see that happening for people outside of the EU and EU citizens of colour particularly. Mm. I can't disagree with this and that's important as I said earlier that people make people is the key in NHS. So there will be a witch hunt where people will look at your immigration status and decide whether, whether to treat you or not. not it's already happening. Well, it is already happening. Well kind of but but it's it's the policy and the policies needs to needs to be you know shaped in a way where where it's benefiting our uh, us as citizens but and this is where we need to get involved and correct me if I'm wrong the ethics of medical care doesn't matter what your status is if someone is sick and they need treatment health care should be provided right, and yeah. it's also a public good yes. we need to stop thinking um, along the lines of citizenship and non-citizenship there are people living in the UK all of them need health care Thank you. Uh, Let me see I what these I people think. I absolutely agree with uh, that. We shouldn't be creating second-class citizens out of this. Just today we're hearing that Britain has lost its measles-free status. Um, that's connected to right-wing scaremongering as well. And we can't be treating people separately. We've got to say, this is, as Jessica Potter's just said, a public good. 
everybody needs to be treated in order to tackle these deep problems and keep get our, get our measles free status back, protect the public health. Thank you. Mm. Chris? People dying. I mean, effectively, no deal Brexit is going to lead to deaths and Matt Hancock hasn't been able to rule that out. And that's what's the disgraceful thing about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, medicine shortages, care costs going up and companies going bust, it could all lead to, to deaths, effectively. Hussein, how do you feel as an employee of NHS? I totally agree what's been what's been said, so, and I mean my line of duty is more end uh, end of life. Right. So I, I see that at, at the very end stage anyway. But quite rightly, there will be suicides and deaths because of the Brexit issue. If people don't have income, people don't have uh, have to pay more for their food and fuel and things like that, and they don't get their income, and obviously their will health will deteriorate and the frontline and e and everything will pack up and then the, it goes into the cycle so it will be a breaking point so jessica it's just very depressing because it all undermine, uh, undermines the fundamental values of the NHS, which is to provide health care free at the point of service for everyone who mm. needs it. We haven't even touched on the mental health aspects no. of it. Absolutely. The stress Quite. that I, know I was just talking about, it's going to cause a lot of problems for people and it's at breaking point. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we need to go on a short break. Uh, please don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We'll be back very soon.